a question is about a sister from the U.S. who's asking about a woman activist called so-and-so who says that hijab is not compulsory in these times and that hijab is actually cultural. It was for those times of the Prophet ﷺ and not these days. And she wants to know about the woman's right concerning the hadith about when a man calls his wife. Okay, these are two different questions. So the first question, a woman activist in the USA is talking rubbish and nonsense. So what does this have to do with us? This is a problem when we get such, with all due respect, nonsense from countries like the US pertaining Islam from people who are not qualified to talk about Islam Alhamdulillah we have scholars of Islam people who had spent their entire life studying Islamic sciences I'm not talking about students of knowledge or da'is or I'm talking about real scholars who are acknowledged as scholars don't look at someone like me giving a seminar here or a workshop here and he's considered to be a scholar this is nonsense scholars are those who are well versed essentially in Arabic in Quran and its tafsir and its sciences in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, in knowing what was abrogated and what was not in knowing usul al-fiqh in knowing the fiqh itself and the different fatwas of scholars so that they can apply all of this and they are acknowledged by other scholars to be scholars so this individual a sister coming after 15 centuries of Islam after the consensus of all Muslims that hijab is mandatory upon women and she just sits there drinking her, her, her latte probably and says hijab is a cultural thing and you're wasting our time asking us such a question to refute it? This is pathetic. This is baseless. And this woman, with all yani, due respect to where she's coming from, has no knowledge of Islam. This is why Muhammad ibn Sirin, may Allah have mercy uh, on his soul, the son-in-law of Abu Huraira and one of the great tabi'een said that this religion or this knowledge that you acquire and learn this knowledge is deen it is religion so observe and scrutinize who you are taking your religion from it's not sufficient to open YouTube and watch a clip of XYZ saying any rubbish on his mind it's not acceptable for you to listen to Tom, Dick or Harry writing an article and being articulate and saying so many things that you don't have knowledge of but because of his convincing way you think that he's a scholar there are so many deviant sects around you there are the super Sufis there are those who are Rafida there are those who are secularists and liberal those who are actually these are the modern names the actual real names is hypocrites who undermine Islam through what they say so they come to you and they throw and cast doubts over your religion and at the end of the day you come and ask such a question now if someone tells you that well this was at the time of the Prophet but there are probably more than one God what will you do if someone comes to you and says well Salat is not five it should be three because of this and because of that the Quran it's they can do whatever they want as long as those listening to them are ignorant if you don't possess certainty and conviction in your religion if you don't have the means of referring to the scholars and asking them you will be like a feather in the wind taking you left right and center and this should not be know who you take your religion from USA 
is a great country. There are a lot of good students of knowledge that I know of, mashallah, and they're doing a lot of good work. But there are also some phony school, uh, uh, students of knowledge. They may charge per a seminar or per a lecture $20,000 plus tickets plus it, it's a business to them. So may Allah <laughs> make it easy for them but for you to acquire your knowledge you don't acquire your knowledge from this uh, 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 lady who claims that the hijab is something that is old subhanallah as if Allah did not know that it was limited to time. Allah's religion is not limited to time. Tomorrow, someone will come and say, listen, drinking wine at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was haram because people did not have any locks on their doors and they could get like wasted and kill people or rape others. Now, alhamdulillah, we have locks and we can control ourselves. We're social drinkers. We just have a, a glass or two just to be in the mood and nothing happens. So it's halal. These people want to change your religion. So I hope that answers your questions. Her second question.